welcome. This is a short intro to using Discover Life identification guides. Notice up here, we're at www.discoverlife.org. That takes you to this page. You can click here to go to all the ID Nature guides. It shows you all the guides that people have been working on. Each guide is the property of an individual person, not Discover Life. Discover Life provides space for them and how well they work and how complete they are are completely up to the author of each of these guides. We're going to talk about the B guides. You can click here to go to them or more easily you can click on the Mumblebee here. I just want to show you one additional trick which is this link here will take you to a different server um, so that if Discover Life guides which are very popular and are often uh, can get busy uh, is busy, you can click to the original and you will um, uh, usually have uh, faster access to the guides. So here we're going to click our shortcut to the B guides. It takes us to the Apoidea page. You can here see um, a it says under ID guides, but this is a list of all the bee species in the world run by the American Museum of Natural History, uh, thanks to John Asher. Um, but we want to jump down to the bee guides which are listed here and the best thing to do is use this as a shortcut that you paste to the top of your browser so that you don't have to go through those steps because most people end up using these a lot. There are guides for the genera of all the North American species and Caribbean species and Mexican species um, and there are guides that are uh, all complete for the east of the Mississippi part of North America and differentially complete, as you can see by the W's, for the uh, West as well. And um, they're all set up exactly the same way, and we're going to jump to the Celioxis female guide here as an example to explain the various features. Okay, here's a Celioxis female guide, and I want to point out some very basics here to begin with. This frame over here are questions that will help differentiate the species of Celioxis. In this case, it's only for the Celioxis east of the Mississippi River. Um, this is a list of the species that remain in the guide. These are all 23 that are known to occur east of the Mississippi. By clicking on these um, radio buttons here and clicking uh, any of these search buttons, you can then trim this list down by answering questions. It's very important to get into your mindset that these guides are not the same as dichotomous keys and it takes a very different way of working them. So in a dichotomous key you would answer question number one and you would have to make a decision as to which of the states, usually two, is the right one. That takes you to question uh, subsequent questions and you follow it very linearly. Here you can answer any question in any order that you want and you want to do that. You want to only answer questions that you're uh, confident of the answer of and they can be your favorite questions, they can be ones where you clearly see the character, it doesn't matter, you shouldn't guess. Now that brings up though sometimes you have a character and you have more than one state and you know, for example, that it's not this character and it's not this character, but it could be this one or this one. So the safe thing to do is click both. Again, this is something that's different where you don't have, you're not forced to choose just one. You can choose several. In fact, you could choose all three if all three are possible, but this one clearly is not. So again, you want to start with a very conservative approach so that ultimately the answer you get you have high confidence in. If you start guessing then your confidence in that answer is going to be much lower and there's no need to. So as you go along you can click the, any of these search buttons and the list as you have um, uh, clicked radio boxes will decrease because each of these species is scored for these questions um, in most cases. Now not always because some of these species May, we may not have had specimens or the particular character may not be appropriate to it, so it may not be scored. So 
in those cases, if a species is not scored for a character, it remains in the list of possibilities because, again, that's conservative. These little green numbers are refer to the number of species that are scored for having each of these characters. It gives you some sense for the fact that these are uncommon character states, only having attained by one species, and these are more common ones. But also that this uh, character as a whole, these states help split out lots of different species, and that's going to be a useful thing. So you go along, you click on different uh, questions, your numbers go down, you are then left with um, a smaller and smaller list. At some point, though, you want to go over here and hit the Simplify button and perhaps use these other buttons, which I now will explain. Okay, let's take a look at these very cool features. First, if we click See Map, what we're going to see are these three species mapped using Discover Life's, Discover Life's Global Mapper feature. Each color is a different species. You can click outside of the species um, circles and zoom in. You can then see the distribution of the um, species, get a sense of commonness, get a sense of geographic location, and then compare it to where your specimen was collected, and get some idea on whether you're at the center of the range, whether it's a likely candidate, or you're at the edge of the range, or an unlikely candidate. Additionally, you can click on the um, dots themselves and look at the records. And um, if there are multiples, you'll see them listed at the bottom. But this gives you some additional maybe perspectives on, on how and when and what dates things were collected. Um, you can zoom down in many cases to aerial photography. OK, if we click on Compare Images, it brings up images, if they exist, in this case it does not, of the three species here. And you can then do a direct comparison of the um, specimen to these images to see if there's some clear differentiation based simply on the look and feel of the specimen. If you click on any of these, you can go into the specimen further. You click it one more time, you can get into uh, detail of the um, picture too as well if you want to look at um, particular features such as um, you know, wing venation or what's going on, say, on the tibia. OK, so if you then um, are finished with that, and you would want to click the Simplify button. The way to think about the Simplify button is that it is going to create an entirely new guide to Celioxus, but based only on these three species. So the scorings for these three species are addressed, and questions that are no longer useful in separating them are thrown out. And additionally, questions that are hidden, because the front page of all the guides only has questions, a few questions that separate out large groups of species, um, hidden behind are all the little detailed questions like C. quaternix versus others and some of these other more obscure things. And those are only brought up when you hit the Simplify button. You can hit the Simplify button at any time. But better is when you have six or fewer so you don't end up with a large number of questions, as in some guides have many, many small ones to look at. So um, as you do that, then you have more questions to address. You can keep clicking until, like if we click that one, we have our one additional um, uh, species. I can click on the species name. I can scroll through pictures. If there is, in this case there is not, any literature that we have, we would have included it. You can read that. That's potentially useful. You can look at the map again. You could also, at any time, let's go back here um, in the guide, you can click on the pop-up button, and you can see the same information in a small window. Um, and there's just often a lot of information on um, seasonality and um, nectar sources and pollen sources in the guides as well. That's it. That's a very brief um, introduction. Oh, I forgot one thing. You can click on any of these illustrations um, within the guide to look at more details. And there's a little button here, Explain, that if we feel that this character needs more explanations, we will have an Explain button. You can click on that and look at things more. So the next 
video will have more details about the many, many other features that are present here that will help you, the advanced user, potentially do more work. I should also point out that almost always there is some um, information here about the state and province uh, possibilities for these species that you can click on and use geography to eliminate certain ones too. Thank you very much.